buying one US dollar, 70 euro cents and 67 pence sterling. Now for more on the impact of the cost of the Japanese tsunami and how the Australian share market is trading, Rod North joins you now from Bourse Communications. Rod, good morning. Good morning. First of all, let, let's look at the Australian dollar. It, it's bounced back up and uh, the market's also looking a little healthier too. Yes, very much so. I mean, we've seen, I think, a bit more stability, even though there's a lot of uncertainty still in the market. And one of the, thing, the things that the market always dislikes is uncertainty. So we've seen... Uh, the market sort of bounced back just uh, in the last uh, trading day and in particular last night on Wall Street and then even last week uh, the uh, market in Australia finished uh, even for the week which was pretty remarkable because we did see the Tokyo market drop 10% as, as a result of the tsunami and, um, and the earthquake there and world market sort of dropped by 6% overall but yet we've seen them recover mm. about three so we've got a bit of a gyration happening uh, in world markets at the moment which probably doesn't come as a surprise at all but it is interesting that we sort of look back 12 months where we had quite a bit of uh, momentum going in the share market and then of course we had all the issues over European debt uh, and the market sort of uh, ended uh, 2010 really going nowhere so mm. we're in a similar situation in, in many ways because there's still a fair bit of uncertainty we've obviously got to see things uh, uh, be resolved uh, in Libya um, and of course there's the potential for some contagion effect there so with this uncertainty you're going to see the dollar sort of moving around a fair bit and you're also going to see world markets uh, sort of move uh, in the same way. Well speaking of rocky markets super funds have had a rough time of it over the last couple of years uh, now there are some new performance figures out. Yes, there, there have been some, um, some figures out that have pretty much indicated that uh, unfortunately all the gains that people were enjoying in their super funds for, for the um, you know, year to date have probably been wiped out up, up to this point. Great. But of course the one thing that we can hope to, to see as the uh, f uh, you know, full year progresses is that those um, returns hopefully will be picked up as you know, the remainder of the year sort of moves on. Um, mm. But yes, uh, we, have, we have seen a lot of those gains. But remember, superannuation gains, they're paper gains. Um, until you actually redeem your investments, you haven't actually lost anything. Working till 85? Exactly, that's what it means, We've just got to keep working 95. harder and harder. Sitting on this couch until we're 85. Mm. Get used to that. Mm. <laughs> I know not, no, a lot of people wouldn't like that. Um, now look, this very controversial potential merger between the Singapore and the Australian stock exchanges, and I've got to tell you, a lot of people in Australia absolutely hate the idea. Does it look like it's going to get the go-ahead? There's a few concerns that have arisen over that. Of course, they've made their application with the Foreign Investment View Board, and that's about a week into the 30 days that they need to get approval. Mm. I, I think the Singapore exchange is expecting to get approval from that, but of course the big issue is that um, they need to get the nod from Parliament on this one and, and there's been a fair bit of nervousness um, you know particularly given that there's a hung Parliament as well on you know in all quarters about what uh, might be the final view there so it's going to be interesting to see what happens and of course the shares in ASX have dropped a lot as well so that as bid at $48 is now back to sort of 42 If you were to put money on it what do you reckon? I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. I think it's going to be a very hard call and particularly with world markets where they are and valuations and so forth I think it's probably going to be uh, derailed. Rod North, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the New South Wales Labor Party has been criticised for the delay in delivering its election policies to be costed. The head of the Independent Parliamentary Budget Office says he was given just one day to examine 42 policies. Now, the Coalition says the situation is a debacle, but it's important to note that...